So, uh, as the title says, I'm here to talk about crafting DeFi-backed NFTs, like using a decentralized finance protocol to actually back NFTs. And I was supposed to talk a little bit about uh, how you lend them in games, but I mean, what uh, Joseph is doing is so great, uh, and I have so little time to talk to you today. So if you want to talk more about uh, lending, uh, come and see us at our booth. I'll be happy to tell you what we are doing on this, uh, on this side. Um, quick, uh, quick intro, thanks for the intro. Um, I run uh, ETCC, a conference happening in July. Uh, the next wave of, of tickets is happening on the 31st of uh, May. And if you have nothing to do in July, you should come to Paris for this event or at least for the side events. It's, it's going to be a really great, uh, really great conference. Um, and we have a booth here. So if you want to talk after, uh, meet us there. And we also are are dropping those cool NFTs at every conference we go, notably the frozen bretzel this year. So come and grab your bretzel. Um, at Comet, we run games on chain. Those are the pictures from our first games. Um, it was an end-to-end -end smart contract game, so the whole game could be played directly from the chain, but we have built a nice uh, uh, interface for it. And we add different tools like uh, a front end for a shop or uh, connect it to a DEX or create cool mid games or create NFT staking and see how the blockchain infrastructure can withstand, for example, thousands of players playing together. So we are having good fun and with this first game, we decided to go one step beyond and prepare a new game. So if you like gaming and want to see it happening on the blockchain, I suggest you try our public beta. We already have uh, 110,000 people uh, that have played a session. Uh, 110,000 sessions, not that many players yet, but uh, we're ramping up on the number really fast. It's free to play, it's mobile friendly, you should come and check it out. And if you have NFTs in your wallet, you can, you can chill them to your opponent. See, I'm chilling Berlin Blockchain Week from 2019 when I'm playing. Um, if you want a custom integration for your NFTs, like, oh cool, I like when I put my NFT that uh, something explodes. Well, we can talk with, to, to you about that. And we make good partnership on the um, on the NFT integration, on the DeFi integration with Vius Protocol. Uh, if you'd like to do something with us, like, again, come talk to us. So back to the main topic. Um, I expect you've played a game before or maybe an online game before. Um, a big thing about those online games is they usually have an economy. So when you take a step back and look at what is those economy about, um, it has assets like resource and items like uh, like commodities, like iron, wood, and so on, and items you can craft, like an axe, a sword, an armor, and something. Uh, those assets have in-game utility, or they wouldn't be useful at all for the, for the game. Uh, you also find trading services, like I'm supposed to be able to trade my, uh, my axe against the sword, or I'm supposed to be able to sell it, I'm supposed to be able to um, trade my, my commodities against other commodities eventually. And to bring it all together, all those inputs together, you have you, you have production function and grinding function. Like, how much does it cost to actually create an axe? Like between a piece of wood and a piece of iron, or many wood or few iron, and also recycling function. Like, am I being able to uh, grind my item back into the commodity, for example? In order to make all those. Uh, functions work together, you have um, uh, game design rules for the accessibility of those resources. Game design rules such as if you want to get gold, you have to climb this super high mountain and kill this uh, super complicated boss, and then eventually you'll get the gold for crafting the gold armor, for example. Uh, or rules such as, well, you won't be able to craft the gold armor until you reach level 25 or something like this. And eventually also, uh, if it's a multiplayer online game, um, you may want to let the players uh, organize themselves around the different, the different properties of ownership. Like, um, I want to keep uh, the, 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 the abusus and the fructus of this specific item, but you can use it as a player. So here we go, we have some lending. Uh, I want to be able to, to share the ownership. So you need to have some rentals, you need to have some comparatives, you need to have some guilds and so on. And that brings us to the, the rental topic uh, of how do you handle that in game. Um, so how do we do that with blockchain? And um, this has been a topic that I've kept us busy for the last uh, eight to, to 10 months. Um, so if you consider 
items and, and game assets in general. You have ERC-20s, NFTs, all bound items, and many more standards to come. Uh, if you talk about marketplaces to trade, uh, well, we have AMMs and we have the classic marketplaces like uh, ZeroX or, or Coinbase or, or um, OpenSeas and so on. Um, if you want to uh, create those items with a production function or grinding function, well, we need blockchain-based crafting, so that's what we wanted to build with this game. Um, if you want to have insights on how to design those roles, you should talk to a game designer, and I'm pretty sure you'll find some in this uh, in this conference. And of course, for um, uh, letting people uh, go through functionalities and composabilities of ownership, well, we need some uh, uh, guild modules or rental module, of course. So I'm going to try to convince you about why crafting is so good with blockchain. Um, if you've played video games or watched video game video in the past few years, you are probably familiar with these uh, pictures. Do you recognize this game? Oh, it's Skyrim, yes. <laughs> so in Skyrim, you get to craft weapons or craft armors or craft stuff. Uh, the way it works is that you have uh, the metadata of the items you're going to craft. So it's an uh, iron mace here. Uh, you have some information about the damage it deals, about how much it weights, uh, what is the value of this, uh, of this mace. And you have the recipe. Like It requires two leather strips and three iron ingots. Okay, so the recipe is there. So if you bring those resources, you're going to craft this item with this metadata. But there is also some game rules, like um, I have a, a smithing level. So if I'm not high enough in level, I'm probably not going to be able to craft a good mace or not even being able to craft a mace at all, or eventually not being able to craft an, um, a, an, a gold mace, but just an iron mace until I reach level something. Um, so if you're familiar with how blockchain protocols works, you can already see like, oh, there is something cool to do, like we can tokenize that, right? Um, and why would it be so good? Well, uh, the item and its metadata uh, is stored in a token. Well, so it inherits the property of the blockchain, uh, like non-reproducibility, censorship resistance, uh, freedom of access, and so on. And what's really cool, I think, is that the, f is that the recipe can be dynamic. Uh, we can make it so that depending on the, the market stage of uh, iron and leather, uh, maybe it requires more iron, maybe it requires more leather. Um, and what we want to explore in the future games and with the, the partners that we have, because we also provide some infrastructure for, um, for the game studio, is how we can create a new fair business model with this. Such as instead of buying straight away a game on Steam, like okay, it's $50, you have to buy this game. No, for $50, you craft an NFT. Uh, we put those $50 somewhere, um, and at some point, if you want to sell the game, just destroy the NFT and get back a portion of your $50, or even the whole $50 if you let us put that at work for a year or something. So that's typically the kind of thing that the protocol that we're building for crafting is allowing you to do. Um, so technically, what it is from an MVP perspective, we have burning ERC-20s or NFTs as recipe, or storing them somewhere as recipe, um, depositing them on DeFi protocols eventually, <coughs> and using randomness sources eventually, if you want to create randomness on the aspect of your mace or your sword and so on. The crafted items, they are transferable or soulbound, and also grindable. Uh, the cool other things about being grindable is that if you can grind it to get back tokens that are listed somewhere, uh, it technically has a floor price embedded inside the item itself. So you don't really have to care about liquidity and so on and uh, making sure that you have buyer boats on your NFT collections. Um, and actually, this is life. Like, you can try it out today, and here's an example of how it works in uh, our new game. Um, in our new game, you don't buy boosters. Of, of new cards, it's a trading card game. The only way you can get cards is by winning a game, getting some resources, and then crafting new cards to get an even better deck. Because if you win games, you are going to ramp up in level and going to fight better players. So you better craft some cards to continue having a, a good deck for your league. So here we go, we have um, a little recipe here, booster for one card. Um, this recipe involved that you mix aluminum, magnesium, tungsten, and copper together. Um, the recipe itself, if you miss some copper or miss some uh, tungsten, you can trade tungsten to copper and get a better, uh, get, a better um, get the right uh, amount of ingredients for the recipe. <clears throat> and then you just click on craft and what happened? This recipe is based on providing liquidity on the decks. 
So the recipe of the card is technically, I want one LP of aluminium to magnesium. I want one LP of tungsten to copper. If anyone is pushing the market, or if as a designer you've messed up with the distribution function and suddenly there is just too much aluminium in your game, then the pool from aluminium to magnesium is going to change. So you automatically balance the way your items are crafted, thanks to this kind of method. And since the tokens are bound with the LP that have been used to create this, uh, any discrepancy on the market will change the way the previously emitted items have been crafted. So if someone buys a sh tons of aluminium, then creating uh, an NFT that requires an LP from aluminium to magnesium is going to require less aluminium and more magnesium for everyone. Um, and eventually also, <laughs> if there is a lot of trade and you've been crafting your items in uh, very early days, you're going to accumulate a bit of uh, the, the yield or the fees associated with this LP. Um, so what happened in our uh, protocol? Well, if you click on crafting, uh, it creates a transaction, and then we have lots of things happening on the blockchain. So we take all of the tokens that was necessary for the recipe, we create the LP token corresponding to the recipe, we then store the LP token in a vault contract, and we call a randomness function from Chainlink or any fancy randomness that you like, which actually create the emission of the booster of the card. And then you can open the booster of the card, and this is the moment where we actually emit the NFT. Uh, the NFT have been already chosen, have uh, been already uh, uh, defined, but by create, clicking on open, the NFTs are actually brought to the wallet of the, um, of the crafter. Um, and all the LP token that we've created uh, for that we, we that we've created for those tokens are then stored and associated to those NFTs. So if you click on one of the cards or one of the NFT that has been emitted with this crafting system, you can either grind it. So if you grind the token, grind the NFT, you get back the token. So it's completely composable this way. Uh, as a game designer, if you want people to be incentivized to craft, you can say, well, if you grind, you're going to get 100%. If you want people to be less incentivized to craft, you can say, well, if you grind, you're only going to get like 70% of the, the input. If you want to have a form of reverse subscription model, you can say, well, in the first day, you're going to get 10%. In the second day, you're going to get 20%, and so on and so forth. And since we are on the blockchain, you can also sell that token on the marketplace. So well, we run a marketplace based on 0x. So if you liked your card, you can keep it for your deck. If you didn't like your card, you can sell it to someone else. And uh, if uh, you really didn't like your card and you think it's not valuable, you can grind it back to tokens and craft another card, of course. Uh, so here we go. What's next? Well, uh, if you want to talk about rentals, final set of our booths. Uh, and if you want to try these uh, cool protocols, uh, it's open source. We've been audited. It, we have audited it. Uh, we got the report recently. It's fine. Uh, so we are going to open source it and let everyone use it, and also create some compatibility with other DeFi products. And uh, yeah, if you want to chat with us, we are super happy to uh, to deep dive into what we used and how it works, and also to give you some very cool T-shirts and caps and so on. So do find us at a booth and. Um, Happy to take any questions. And if you want to visit our website, it's it here. Thanks, that's super cool. And can you craft also ingredients and not only uh, items? And how do you do that? Sorry, maybe you talked about it. Uh, yes, so um, the recipe system is very flexible. So you can say, well, uh, I need iron, I need wood, and I need, a, uh, and I need an element. So you can, you can create recipes that takes as inputs uh, ERC20s or NFTs. In the case of the NFTs, it can be burned, it can be uh, grinded and, um, and, and mixed with the rest. It's very composable. Um, one thing we can do as well is, uh, like uh, you, you, you consider iron, you consider refined iron or super refined iron, then in this case, uh, the easiest way forward is just to have those tokens as, NF as ERC20s and say that there is a rate between uh, iron and refined iron. And so the more iron get extracted and uh, traded for refined iron, uh, the more a refined iron becomes uh, expensive. But can we add an ingredient? Like, I want to add this speaker. <laughs> 
added, sorry, is adding ingredients uh, uh, part of the protocol or only you, the game designers, uh, can add ingredients? Um, it's, it's part of the protocol. Like, you can create your own, uh, your own, your own NFTs and your own, uh, your own recipe uh, as you want. There is a, a factory aspect of it, actually. I have some, probably we connect later, but how do you then give it powers in the game? How do you decide, hey, I want to build something that is hyper powerful? <laughs> well, in this case, it's definitely a, a, a game design perspective. Like um, the protocol is open that in a way that uh, if you want to use it for your own game, uh, it's very composable. Uh, but if you want to have uh, the, your own NFTs to have an effect in our games, um, as a as a minimum viable integration, you have this form of uh, chilling your NFTs when you click on them and you just like, hey, here's my cool POAP from Berlin Blockchain Week. Um, but if you want the NFTs to be, uh, to be integrated, like, uh, okay, so this specific NFT is this specific card with this specific uh, cool design, uh, then it needs a deeper integration. Uh, of course. So the, the metadata aspect of it is defined by the creator of the recipe. Uh, so if we are not the creator of the recipe or not endorsing the creation of this recipe, we are not going to integrate it uh, deeply in the game by default. Um, that being said, it can always be added later, right? Uh, that's actually a, a, big, um, a big issue in, um, in NFTs plural form uh, with game is that if you consider a game and uh, you have some NFTs, uh, your NFTs are not necessarily going to be compatible with any games. Like if the game is just reading the NFTs that you have in your wallet, they can do whatever they want with it. Like, oh, it's just decoration. It's just like, hey, you can chill them. Like, hey, here's a telegram stickers of my NFT. Um, but in order for your, let's say, your board ape to, uh, to or your, no, let's not quote board ape, let's say CryptoPunk. If your CryptoPunk is, uh, <laughs> is, is in your wallet, you're not going to be able to use it as a character um, by default. Or the very game graphic engine of the game has to be able to interpret this uh, CryptoPunk as something that fits either in the, in the graphic uh, style or in the in the graphic engine of this uh, this game, a uh, good example is uh, here you have a you have a picture of Skyrim. Uh, it's a medieval fantastic game. Um, so if I come with a CryptoPunk and I want to play it as a character, I'm like well, it's not going to look very good. So we need to have a, a CryptoPunk version, Skyrim CryptoPunk version of it in order to interpret it and, and and have a good narrative. The only exception to that is games like Super Smash Bros. Uh, melee, like okay, okay, everything from every franchise is bring together and we just fight with each other. Uh, but this form of composability of NFTs cross game is actually uh, a big, uh, a big topic. I think uh, we're going to probably address it in the next 12 to 18 months. Right now, we are at the lending and crafting protocols. Well, it's coming. <laughs> Super exciting. Uh, does anybody else have any questions? Yeah, I wonder uh, because there is like a lot of um, a lot of games kind of like looking at uh, things like rollups, and this this may be a bit, bit I guess like technical question, but how how are you reasoning about kind of including assets from you know like different chains or twos or like even things mm -hmm. like rollups, which are yeah. kind of like harder to access? Yeah, um, so it's um, well on on our end, we are strong believers of uh, the the rollup scaling solutions of. Uh, the roll-up scaling, roll scaling roadmap, let's say, of, uh, of Ethereum as a, as a chain and as a franchise. Uh, so our NFTs, like the spaceships, are actually the most valuable NFTs that we have in our ecosystem. And those ones are minted on Ethereum and then bridged to Polygon for staking purposes or for usage purposes. Uh, we were very close with the off-chain lab team early in the early days. And we decided to go with Polygon because it was live at this time. Uh, we are working on our own version of Rollup for our own use, uh, just to make sure that um, we can eventually scale to millions of users at the same time. But uh, when you connect to one of our applications, we scan your wallet on various chain, and we get the metadata of the different NFTs that you own, and we let you use it as, a, as stickers inside the game. So there is no chat uh, in, the, in, the, in the game. Uh, you can chat by changing your pseudonym, 
that's good enough chat. And you can chat also by tuning your NFTs, like, hey, here's my burning box and we pop. That's that that's the kind of thing you do. Uh, so we scan the NFTs of various chain. Um, it's, um, it's actually a very cumbersome process and the uh, metadata of NFTs are not really standardized. So it, it has insult to injuries, let's say. Um, but we do it and um, we expect in the next uh, two years that uh, most of the chains are going to be roll-ups or are going to be well integrated with communication on the beacon chain. So we'll be able to eventually scan them properly at some point. Uh, that will be the ideal situation and uh, all the situation would be like just having everyone store everything on the same decentralized storage protocol so it makes it easy for everyone to retrieve. Um, but there's definitely something to be done in terms of uh, having uh, APIs that uh, standardize the uh, access of, uh, of uh, NFT images or, or medias associated with those uh, NFTs. Uh, a couple of companies are trying to, doing, to do it, uh, but the very metadata things of it is still something that's, uh, that's hard, to, uh, hard to grasp. Uh, if I have one more minute, I just want to uh, say more things about this specific topic because uh, when uh, the previous gentleman asked, uh, well, what if uh, you put your CryptoPunk in Skyrim? Like, how do you deal with that? Uh, I expect that collection owners or community behind those collections are going to say, okay, I have CryptoPunks. Well, I need the Unity version of these CryptoPunks. I need the Sandbox version of this CryptoPunk. I need the whatever version of this CryptoPunk. So that if a game uses this specific engine, it should be able to interpret it properly. Like it was supposed to be designed by the creators or by the community that have chosen that. Uh, which had some different layers of complexity of the metadata. Uh, so the ideal situation will be to have a, a really strong API for, uh, for, for querying those type of metadata. So, hey, I want the CryptoPunk Unity version of this CryptoPunk number. Okay, here, is, here it is. Uh, something very standardized that you can check, such as, oh, you are using uh, Comet Spaceships. What is the Unreal Engine version of a Comet Spaceship? Oh, it's this one. Okay, get it. Now use it and enjoy it. Uh, so we create a long, it's a really strong composability between games. And um, it's quite, it, 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 when you think about it in the future in terms of game design, you can imagine that you will create a game that's just an infrastructure and the game assets will just be brought inside the game by the user. So if you want to, like, really the ready player one narrative, actually. Um, but I think we are quite far from it and right now we are concentrating on the, on the aspect of uh, just uh, creating the right tools to make game designs possible. Um, and as we get into a phase where uh, this type of games go mainstream, and I definitely think they will sooner than we expect, uh, because lots of money was invested in different games, uh, in, including us, so we're really pushing hard for that to happen fast. Um, and rollups is going, are going to help, and uh, the, the rollup querying infrastructure is going to go fast as well. Like uh, Infra and others are going, already doing it quite well. Um, so if you want to hear me monologue more or ask questions, <laughs> you can find us at the, at the booth. Uh, I have a super friendly team that's here uh, with me in, in, from Paris. Um, hopefully see you later. Uh, grab a, a cap, a sunglasses, t-shirts, some cool stickers. And um, if you are listening to this talk remotely, see you in Paris.